by step on the POS station right now. You, I am underneath. I have a cash drawer right here. The only thing that connects to the cash drawer is you could refer to like an old printer cord. It pops in right underneath and the feet will keep it. Do this right without knocking myself out. I'm gonna leave this on top of right now because once this is in the spot, so I left myself plenty. This just there's this is the cash drawer controller. Ethernet port is going to be coming from your CDC one on your wall plate. It'll go there. And then any of these ports right here, just plug it in. And the only other thing you're going to have is your power right here. So give me a second and I'll be right back and I'll show you how all this comes together. Okay. So as you can see, I have my ethernet cord hooked up and down here you'll see my POS station, CDC1, 2TP, 3LP. I have all that staged. I'm gonna power up my cash drawer controller right here. Okay. It has hold on one second because there should be an LED screen it must be this one once it fires up we'll give it a second to communicate and we'll come back to it but so my cash drawer is in, my CDC is in. Inside the cash drawer are these two keys. There we go. So as you can see, it's now coming up. And you have a digital display right there. It will go through. This will eventually pull an IP address. Remember, all zeros means you're not going to pass. Or anything starting in 169 is not going to pass. But when the IP comes up, if it's 192 or dot something or 10 dot something, then you're, you're going to be fine. So it'll go through that while you finish this stuff real fast while we're waiting on this to, to get its IP address. The keys are in the drawer. I want to go over the keys real fast. One key, we're in a location that's closed right now. So I will put this with a sticky note that says, M for MOD key ring, which is manager on duty key ring. The other key will be put this key in the safe. Now, the last thing I want to show you about the keys before you give them to the manager is that you insert the key into the cash door and turn it to the vertical position. Don't turn it all the way here, it'll completely be locked. So when you close this, vertical. That is the way that the cash drawer will pop automatically when they do a, a charge on the remote health charger. So right now I have this done. And now as we pull our IP address on this and it's dialing in, we're good to go. I wanna talk about the other two devices of your POS stack. This is the Brother Thermal Printer. It opens up, you got a roll of tape. You're gonna insert this. You're going to insert this. In. And it's directional. It's got an arrow on it. So literally, when you peel this off and you bring this through. Oh, I'm just going to tear this off now. Okay. Actually, I'm going to hand this over while I do something else. But you're going to, you see the direction. It goes over the top. But before you do that, and in, in the, both these printers, what we're getting ready to go over, 
there is always probably some tape or a pull tab. This one has one there, and then it has one right here where the tape comes through. Now, Claire's gonna go ahead and put that in and feed it through. I have my ethernet cable already plugged in, and I have the power already plugged in. Okay, plug it in down there. It is. Okay. You have it so before you can do anything it's going to tell you to set up language and clock english okay it is not 2017 so we'll go to 20 okay it is july okay and it is the first it is what time is it 10, 21. Oh. 10, okay. 21, okay. Oh, nope, 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 nope. And then, okay, and then you are done with that. So just, nope, sorry. Go out of that. And that's what it should look like when it's set up. Then to feed the paper, we're going to hold your feed, oh, gotta close the cover first. Oh, okay, so I have it not installed correctly. Okay. I'm gonna feed that into there like so. There we go, let's close the lid and hold the feed. There it goes. And then it should cut it. And now it is all ready to go and set up. Now we'll come back to this. You're, this will also, you're not done with this. You'll do an air print. And we're going to go over that in a second. The last item that I have. So this is now ready. The last item goes down on this next shelf. And it is the Xerox. I have this out for a reason right now. When it first get it, you're out of this. You're going to find this blue tape everywhere. Undo all the blue tape. But... It don't just look for what's on the outside. You're going to actually open this up and there is styrofoam to protect it here. That needs to come out. There's blue tape here that you need to pull. Mm -hmm. Nope, no, no. Nope. Pull the blue tape out. And then you actually have to take the cartridge out for this last part. You're going to pull that out. Pull this through, and this says remove, so obviously remove. And then you're going to put it back in. If you're smart enough. So, and it's locked back in. Now, that you're not done, so here's the paper tray. The paper tray, you are going to need to find some printer paper and there's probably plenty everywhere. There's a ream right down here for me. So I'm gonna take some of the printer paper so I can do my test print. And there is, this is spring loaded. If it pops up and you don't push it back down, you will not be able to close it. It doesn't come pre-ready for that. So you're gonna press on this, slide this out, slide it back to measure your paper, slide it back into the grooves. And now you have paper. It also comes with a back. So back here behind, I didn't put this one on earlier today, so I'll let her this do it. This one just, it just clips right onto that spot, just like that, and sits right on there. Last thing is right off the, the tape, right off the very top. So then it's simple to plug this in. You only have two things to do. I already have my power cord pre-staged. So we're going to plug this into power. I'm plugging in my ethernet. And then there is a switch back here to turn this on. Now, this in the guide it says it can take 20 minutes to initialize. 
So the rest of this, instead of me walking you through step by step, Jeff from Wireless Lifestyles has spent a, long, a lot of work creating on the tracker something that, that will walk you through all the steps of setting this stuff up. So here's the main tracker page. Down here on the tabs, it says Equipment Setup Flow. Now pretty much everything that we've taught, that I've done with on videos is on here. It starts basically when you walk in the store, what you need to do, and you can go right down. Here you can see it says talking about labeling the dealer WAN, the Timo WAN. So you don't have to try to remember everything I had. You need to have a small computer, your phone, whatever it takes to have this up so that you can follow along with this. What's nice about this tracker is that he's also attached all the help pages to each thing that you get to. And this is where I guess have to go and sometimes look because for example, um, here's the POS stack completed installation cash drawer, cash drawer connector, and the Xerox and brother right here. So I click on, I, I open that up and it brings a drop down tab and I go in here and then right there, it takes me to this page where I have the entire installation guide to each device and I can follow right along. So you can go through these steps. It shows you what it should look like. It even goes into heads up and things that you need to do. It talks about the keys, everything that I've talked about. It talks about which way to have the key in a vertical position. It talks about the cash drawer controller, everything that you need. But most importantly, what I want to get down to. So here is, that's the cash drawer. When you go into the spot to validate your item, you should have the drawer status closed and the PI last timestamp will be green that it it's it it came up that will that will let you know that it's talking to the Timo network now here's where I, I'm not going to do this on video I am going to expect you guys to come here to the Xerox 330 laser printer setup and config this is important because you're going to go into the menu settings itself and follow basically everything down from step eight step nine step all the way down it gives you the password on how to get into the tools and how to make changes anytime that you apply changes the first time you try to apply a change it'll ask for the the login which is admin and the password is one 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 and then after you do that every change you make will automatically happen but here's these page the description pages you need to match each of the each thing that they said Take note to the machine name. Every machine name will be different. And what they're asking for is the very first two letters are going to be the state. So WA being Washington. And then the first three letters of the city. So I'm in Olathe right now, it would be O-L-E. And then the next thing is the SAP code number that you all have already on, on your tracker. So for the example of the store I did today was three uh, RSI. And then it's going to be asking for the printer's IP address. Now, when you do all the configuration, oh, excuse me, there is a letter B first and then the last two letters of the IP address. Mm -hmm. After you the, after you start that setup, you'll get a, a paper that prints out of this of the of the Xerox printer and it will have the IP address on there. So the last two numbers will be the final two numbers to identify that printer. So I was just corrected. It's not the last two numbers of the IP address, it's the last octet of the IP address. So it'll be the last group of numbers. For example, if it ends in dot .189, you would put 189. So that's how you'll, you'll label your printer. This is important, and the reason this is so important is that these devices will be controlled and maintained by T-Mobile themselves, not the dealer that we're working with right now. So when they see that this printer ink is low on their network, 
they'll know exactly what store to send that printer ink to, or if it's not working, they'll know what, where to send the technician. So you need to follow these guidelines, it's, and they're all laid out exactly how to do everything, even what to set when the ink cartridge, the toner notification, right now it's preset, by the way, at 10%. They wanna know when it's at 50%. So you'll change it to 50. And then the other one, you'll change to 15. There's a reason for all this. There is uh, even e an email that you'll set up where it notifies T-Mobile. So just follow this screen specifically and set each of those devices. It's very easy to do. And then you'll be done with this until you do your, um, your air print. And the air print is done not off a computer. Not Don't try to do it off your phone. You'll take one of the remote tablets, do the air print. And I'm gonna bring that up right now because when I go back to the wireless lifestyles tab, again, everything is right here, including I've got Xerox full install and configure guide on here if I need it there. Everything that you need has been provided for you right here. Your uh, Another link to um, the T-Mobile Remove Verify. You've got links up the top to, to where to look to, uh, that your equipment's online. But one of the things I want to bring you down to is right here where it says Remo and Timo Air Print Testing. You go right here, click on it, again, open that link, and it walks you through exactly how to take one of the, the uh, iPads and do an air print on each device to let you know that it's done and that you got everything uploaded. It's gonna print, the Brother Print is gonna print out like three different quick labels. And this one will print out like two pieces of paper to show that you completed it on that store. You can take a picture of all those and upload it. I also suggest that you just staple them just in case so that if it ever comes that you didn't do the test, you've got verification that you did. But as you can see, we have our cash drawer installed, our brother uh, thermal printer and the black and white laser printer all installed. The only thing I have left to do is to go through my settings, which I'll follow my guide to do, and you're done with the POS stack. That should be all right now on installs. Uh, any other questions, feel free to call me.